Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, my pastor. God bless you. While we remain standing for the time factor, take your Bible with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? While we remain standing, kindly take your Bible with you and confess all together with me as you open in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Are we on 1 Kings chapter 18? Right from verse 41. Indeed, this is my Bible. I am what God says I am. I have what he says I have. By the revelation upon my man of God, I boldly confess my life will never remain the same again. Because my mind is alert and my heart is receptive. And as it is written in Isaiah 190, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the goodness of the land. You are therefore by the bread as broken on the altar tonight. It is well with my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me in the book of 1 Kings chapter uh, 18 right from verse 41. Now Elijah said to Ahab go up eat and drink for there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower. Hallelujah. So Ahab went up to eat and drink but Elijah went up to the top of Camel and he crouched down on the earth and put his face between his knees. Hallelujah. He put his face between his knees. Iyo ni saiti ya kuinama. Iyo ndo tunaita kusujudu. Wana yesu wa sifiwe. And he said to his servant, Go up now. Look toward the sea. So he went and looked. And he said, I am seeing nothing. And he said to him again, Go back until the seventh time. And it came about at the seventh time that he said, Behold a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea. Tell your neighbor it is not as small as you may think. And he said unto him, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down to that. So, to go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you. So it came about in a little while that the sky grew black with clouds and the wind, and there was a heavy shower, and Ahab rode. And went to Jezreel. But something so much encouraging about this excerpt is verse 46. Then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. How I pray for you that the hand of God be upon you. And he, he gathered up his loins. Manana konjai kanzu iye. And outran Ahab on Jezreel. We call it the speedy anointing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Even as we are grateful for the reading of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm grateful once again that this is the day the Lord has made for you and I to rejoice and to be glad in it. The guests who are in the house, once again, you are welcome. This is Transforming Grace Ministry, a house of revelation. One thing you might not miss in this church, it is revelation. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We are giving you what the devil doesn't want you to get. 
the devil does not have a problem with you worshiping Jesus. He doesn't have a problem with you going to church early and in time. He doesn't have a problem with you carrying the Bible because he too has a copy of the same Bible. Hallelujah. He doesn't have a problem with you ascending to heaven and communicating with Jesus and reasoning together with God because after all, he too ascends and descends heaven every morning and every evening. And as the Bible teaches, kuna baadhi ya malaika hawawezi kusimama mbele ya huyo shetani. So when you are fighting the devil, be careful who you are fighting. Be careful enough to realize whether you have the full armor of the Lord as far as that particular warfare is concerned or not. He's not just someone you face and start rebuking. He's someone who is renowned. He's someone who is well established too. Hallelujah. He doesn't have a problem. The only thing with which you can get to overcome the devil. Nina ona the kuna wimpo ambao una imba. Shetani nitagubiga na mawe nitagubiga. And then that man saw away and he says, And when he comes to the stanza, Shetani nitagubiga na mawe nitagubiga. He picks a stone. And he faces the devil like this. And, and, and the devil is not moved by that particular stone. The only thing with which you need for you to be able to heal that situation, for you to be able to overcome that particular devil, it is the revelation. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Now, kwa sababu shetani alienda akalifunika kaburi la Yesu Christo. Ale wapatia wale makuhani na wasaliti na makuhani wa ovu ufunua wa kwake mwenyewe ya kwamba wasukume jiwe kubwa lile jiwe lililosukumwa katika lile kaburi la Yesu for your information haliku kwa kaburi la Yesu lilikuwa kaburi la nani la Yusufu wa Madhea bwana sifiwe kwa hivyo haliku kwa lime, liwekelewe lile jiwe kubwa maana kuna ma, ma, majira na nyakati ambazo members of the family wangeingia pale kuenda kuona ule mwili kuna majira na nyakati walikuwa wanaenda na mafuta kupaka ule mwili usipate kuharibika kwa haraka maana katika hizo nyakati kuna baadhi ya watu kwa sababu ya distance factor hawangeweza kukuja kwa matanga katika wakati inavyopaswa because of lack of transport system bwana sifiwe ibo basi mwili ulikuwa unawekwa for some time unapakwa ina fulani ya anointing ndio usipate kuoza kwa haraka kwa hivyo hawangeweza kuekelea lile jiwe kubwa maana the members of the family wangeshindwa kulisukuma kwa hivyo lile jiwe lilowekelewa juu ya kaburi la Yesu lilikuwa jiwe tofauti na lile lilikuwa liwekwe katika kaburi la Yusufu wa Remadhea lile lilikuwa ni jiwe la adui kusababisha hawa wakuwe na imagination as a human being waseme hata kama huyu ni mwana wa Mungu ukweli ni kwamba hawezi kufufuka kutoka mali yapo na namba 2 akawaibia ufunuo wasipate kukumbuka ya kwamba Yesu alikuwa amewaambia siku ya tatu atapata kufufuka kwa wanafunzi wote kumi na moja hakuna hata mmoja ambaye angekumbuka ya kwamba Yesu alisema atafufuka Otherwise they could have been patient enough one goje tu waone kama siku ya tatu hawataona lile neno Yesu aliwaambia likitimia basi hapo ndio wangepata kuanza kupiga hizo aina ya kelele ambazo ungekuwa napiga Bwana sifiwe So ilikuwa awapumpaze so that nini ifanye ile ufunuo ipote for by that revelation they were able to do what to overcome the enemy I bless you our guests in the house tonight and pray that God in his own special way using his own methodology since he can't be helped to be God may he reveal something you will hold on as your sword of deliverance in this particular moment in which you are and so welcome again 
to the house of God. Hallelujah. Uh, chapter 18 of the book of First Kings. Uh, it is one of the chapters, uh, especially in the history of the Bible, uh, that you and I admire so much because uh, it is full of turmoils, uh, but it is at the apex point uh, where now God in himself, uh, he has come to reveal that he owns it. Israel and that Israel in her own self she has a sense of belonging in God. How I wish and pray that again God does something for you and in you to prove he owns you. Hallelujah. It is a story that in, is involving King Ahab that is rated the most wicked king in the land of Israel. He is a man who is dynamic and hyperactive in everything. Very reactional. You admire his political strategies. But he becomes hungry of power. And as a result of that, he finds himself operating outside the will of God. Can I repeat it again? As a result of the hunger for power, he goes out of the boundaries and he marries a Phoenician, a woman outside Israel against what God had planned. And God's order was, lest you get married to the what we call Gentiles. Uh -uh. Because the Israelites were believers. So marrying from Gentiles is likely to get to influence this family. Because we understood right from the onset of time. Only but the Israel amongst other nations. It was the only nation that was known and recognized for. And with the worship of God. So the other ones were not worshippers. And so, as a result for the hunger for power, he goes, he marries Jezebel, not because he loved Jezebel. And I can prove to you, the reason Ahab brought Jezebel in place was for transactional purposes. There is some value that Ahab wanted to add upon himself as far as political relevance and the power is concerned so that uh, he understood that Jezebel was a princess. Hallelujah. And so when they march together, the princess and this king of Israel, he shall fortify the government of Israel. And as a result of that, through the help of Jezebel, he was able to extend the boundaries of Israel and he took over the land of the Moabites. And that is what politics are all about. Because the only way you can make relevance in politics, it is when you are able to answer the question based on power, based on economy, and based on territories. Hallelujah. And because he has extended territories, you realize he's walking in authority. But something funny about his profile is that he does not have authority over the rains. He cannot bring the rains. There are no rains in the land of Israel. God has ways by which he can stop the unstoppable. Sometimes you look at your boss and think he is at the apex only to realize he has his boss too. Can I repeat it again? You look at your father and you admire him and you think he is at the apex only to realize he has his father too. Because that is how God has put it in place. Sometimes you are left alone in a certain system. And you think that they are taking advantage of you. Not realizing the reason they are is because you are. Uh, listen to me, listen to me. And so we are living in times when there are too much 
noises as the one I'm seeing in Israel today. There is too much noises where everybody is struggling to prove relevance. And because the real relevance can only be proven through the process. And people are not patient enough to endure the process. So people bring in what we call the shortcut ways, the alternative ways through the relevance so that they can make a meaning and as they are struggling to make relevance in this particular system you realize noises are brought in casualties are raised up because now when you are using the alternative way when a semanga yekwamba cheap is expensive pastor felix when you go the cheap way it costs you at some certain point. Oh God, I bless you for how few we are today. That people can get the concept here. Let me not sound like I'm preaching tonight. That something can be helped. Someone can be helped of God. And I repeat it again. After Herod kills one of their apostles, people celebrate him. It gives him a political mileage. And as a result of that, he is tempted to believe. Oh my goodness. Kumbe, when I do this, people love me. People invest in me. People are ready to vote me in. People are entertained by what I'm doing. And so the Bible says, when he noticed that killing one of the apostles gave him a political mileage, he decided to arrest Peter and put him into the chambers in ready to kill him in the following day. Not that Peter had done anything wrong. They take advantage of this particular noise because they don't want to follow the right process. And when you do not follow the right process, casualties come in. Today, because of such noises, when people are struggling to get the relevance of politics at the end of the day without using the right way, the right order, the way of God, the right protocol, you hear people are burned in a church and nobody is moved. Nobody feels sorry about it. No one is disturbed. Ah, blessed be the name of Jesus. A mother says, now because I can't save myself, let me take this animal, this is my young boy, and throw the child through the window. Maybe that child will continue my generation. But when they see a child thrown out, they take the child, throw the child back into the fire in the church. The church of God is being burned, put up on fire. But no one is disturbed, politically speaking, because their objective is to make sure they gain political mileage. And they can do whatever they can do to make sure they arrive there. They care less about collaterals. They care less about the casualties that are being collected along the way. Blessed be the name of Jesus. You, whenever these noises arise, politically speaking, you hear of the baby bando that nobody remembers today. You hear of Jacob Juma. You hear of Musando. The people who are leaving children behind. They are leaving their wives behind. You hear of the lawyer Willie Kimani. Blessed be the name of Jesus. You hear of a man of God has been killed somewhere. And through these political issues, you hear the churches are being broken down. The lands of the churches are being grabbed by politicians who make political documents out of the Photoshop. And they legalize it to make sure it looks right. Even when you put it through cooperative bank that is believed to be the government. That is the time in which we are living today. And I bless the Lord that you and I are in these times. Oh, come on Patricia. Don't feel sorry about it. You are the right woman to be in this season. Your grandma could not have lived in this season. She didn't have the stance. She didn't have the shock absorbers. She didn't have the shock mount to carry the weight. You and I are the right people to carry the weight. The grace we are carrying is greater than that 
of our forefathers. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, and when the enemy shall come in like a flood, I will raise a standard. I am a servant with a standard. I am a preacher with a standard. I am an intercessor with a standard. I keep this with a standard. A chairman with a standard. A senior pastor with a standard. An assistant pastor with a standard. Come on, ushers with a standard. Watch a kuka ukijuhurumia. We are living in times when everything you held on as the ethics, as the character of the day, as the good order of the day, it is fading out. It is fading out. It is fading out. I am born when there is only one channel. Hallelujah. That is the KBC Radio Taifa. There was some certain order based on our culture, based on our religion. And there was some certain order and some certain limitation on what should be played, what should be viewed, what should be talked about. The language factor was regulated. But now today, I'm living in times when there are countless number of channels that you can watch news. When you want to watch pornography, you tune on this. When you tune on pornographic TV moment, good entertaining, when you turn onto that channel, you will find there Brian Jira with his nakedness exposing it on camera. We are living in times when there is pollution all over, political pollution. Until nowadays, it is irrelevant to vote. We have another channel. When you want to hear how lawyers expose their marriage issues, how they, they, you know, they mock their wife, they mock their husbands, you tune on, is it Radio Jumbo, Radio Mambo, and while you share your issues and you think it is being solved, you hear the person who is supposed to be helping you to solve, he is laughing to mock you. <laughs> And the way that man, is it Gideon the ghost? The way they laugh, you wonder, did I come here to be helped or to be mocked? What is so funny about this laughing? We are living in times when the men and women of God we admired as at then. Talk of the ringtones of those times when never ringtone will take a microphone, go to the altar, and you just feel the presence of God is in the house. The days when we would admire men of God and like Shari Martin Nilikua and Rafiki Yango, ah, Mama Lydia, just sit down. This revelation is for you. There is somewhere I'm driving. I just want to take short time. Hallelujah. Talk of Shari Martin. Talk of Kidum. Talk of size 8. Talk of Gloria Muliro. Talk of Shirawa GP. Talk of Lois came. The men and the women of God we admired. Those days we grew up admiring Ruben Kigame. We grew up admiring men and women of God. Preachers. And Kenya was known for the gospel. There is nothing else Kenya was known for. If there is anything blessed you are seeing in the land of Kenya today is as a result of the effort of the men and women of God who stood firm in the preaching of the word of God. When Margaret Wanjiru will take the microphone and she is like the glory is here. When Muiru will take the microphone and it's like Nam Sekelezaji and everybody is struggling to walk to Kakamega and to go to walk to Maliro Garden. That they can hear of the man. Leave alone even hearing. Just sing. Hey, hey, we lived in times when Kenya hosted God. But today again, God has given us grace to live in times when everything we will see, whenever you open up your eyes, it is embarrassing. Nataka ni kuingi se, ni kuingi se. Bend this way, this way, bend that way. Oh, yes, ni nyandu we, ni nyandu we. And and you are like, excuse me. But please let me repeat it again to the preachers of the day. Do not wait for the other preachers to be born. You are the right preacher. Let me preach to my keyboardist again. We lived in times when every keyboardist, his responsibility was to impregnate ladies in the church. They could not 
tights. They could not wear socks. They could not participate to the church activities. They could not carry Bibles. They could not carry notebooks. They could, they could they carry flash disks alone, carrying beats for Aramako But today God has given us grace and care. And because He's a God of remnants, when we can have people this to fear the Lord. Pastor said, do I sound like I'm preaching? <laughs> and when these noises are going over, you realize there are casualties that are being left behind. And now you realize Kenya is losing shape. Kenya is losing shape. And while everybody thought it's Baba, they realize later on, oh, the Baba we thought to be Baba Kumbe, he was a gambler. He was gambling with our lives and he was taking advantage of our lives. Now, at the end of the day, we don't have Baba. We have brothers and sisters who are campo doing it to me back now. And you are like, excuse me, even after all this bloodshed, Raila and Ruto, they are friends. Even after people have been burnt in church, Raila and Kibaki, they are friends. Raila and Uhuru are friends. And you realize the issue is not them. The issue is times. And while we thought that, come on God, maybe a woman being in the judiciary, in the head office, she could make relevance. That is when we realize, oh my goodness, everything we are talking about is bet royal, bet royal, bet royal, bet royal. And now voting in Kenya has become a formality. And now this warrior tells me, come on, don't see our input in Kenya as far as what we are building, the structures we are building, the businesses we are starting here and think that it is just business we came to do. For your information, you are not hosting us. You are not hosting us. Whatever you see us do for Kenya, it is intentional. Look at our wives. We don't allow them to work. We allow them to give birth and stay home and raise children. Every warrior is allowed to marry even 10 wives. And, and, and they are not allowed to use, I don't know what you call it, P3. What are these P's? In education, we have P1 teachers. In, 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 in health system, we, we have P2. In the police department, we have P3. Be careful, P4 is coming. In the metals, we have P20. You see. So there are some certain peace. There are some certain peace in front of there that we even don't know what they are. Can I finish preaching? I'm just about to finish preaching. Uh, uh, come on. I'm just laying the foundation today because it's a big thing. I would really wish to talk about it when everybody's in the house. Hallelujah. Because it's quite revelational. And, 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 and while these noises are going over, the warriors are like, we want to each warrior must give birth to at least 10 children. And when you talk about 100,000 warriors giving birth to 10 children each, then you realize the vision 2030, it is an irrelevant vision. It, it is a dream in Kenya, not a vision. It is a dream for the Kenyans, but a vision for the warriors. And be careful enough and watch me keenly. Listen to my words carefully. Write them somewhere. Very soon, a warrior is going to become the president of this nation. And when these noises are going over, you realize now we are operating on opinions and not the facts. Because you are hearing everyone, you are hearing everything, what you are being told about Haiti. You are like there is warfare in Haiti and you are being told that Kenyans are going to because Kenyan, because Kenyans fear their police. So when they see police, they run away. Now they think that also when those police go to Haiti, when the Haitians see them, will run away. And you are hearing noises all over, posting our police officers there, posting our... 
Nyumbakumi this way and doing a lot of everything and you realize we are operating on opinions instead of facts and when you go about hearing everybody and hearing everything Pastor Felix at the end of the day you find yourself in action yes but achieving zero you find yourself busy a whole year but at the end of the day you cannot put anything on the table with all these activities Ramakabu Jika Tarababa tell your neighbor stop the opinions now and the Bible introduces me uh, to the land of Israel by the king of Israel, the man that who messed, the man who is believed to have messed up the land and the kingdom of Israel as a result of his defiance to walk in the will of God. Hallelujah. He messes up everything. He brings in a wife whom he doesn't love. All because uh, he was after transactional. Be careful those people who are dating here. Whether you, with the kind of the relationships you are in. Whether it is a relationship or a transactional issue. Hallelujah. That is what I was solving with one of my pastors down there. Everything. This lady's expectations are totally different from the man's of God's what? Expectations. And she's like, Pastor, I accept to go back to that man of God as my husband. But I don't want him to honor a church. I just want us to find our church or we'll be coming to fellowship in your church and after we are through with the service, we go. I just want us to do business. And I say, I was like, that is stupid. And if you continue like that, I break this marriage by myself. Ah. For information, I broke it. The man of God is free. Ah, do, do you think we have anything to lose? We have nothing to lose. The reason you are in my life is to complement what God has called me. You are not in my life for handsomeness because after all, Kesho, mimi ndafanana tuta umsese. Umsese ta kipita pa kuna mzigana naeza fanya kusk kusk kusk. Akini ni kipita. Jake umse. Jake umse ame pita. So mimi kesho ndafanana tuta umsese. So, if you are, you are in my life because of how handsome I am, you can be sure that by the way, by the way, I know chairman and a banga was you to be Jana to see Jana to do. I know when I get Mama, Mama Ross, be careful. When I get you, you go up and God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, 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 during this very time, there are noises in Israel, and everybody else is struggling to prove. After this man, then let me repeat it again. I have because of his. You know, hunger for power. He brings in a woman he doesn't love. And you must be sure what is happening between Ahab and Jezebel. It is not relationship, but transactional factors. Ahab needed Jezebel so that he can improve the security system of Israel. When any other nation hears that Ahab, the king of Israel, he is married to a princess from the other land, they plan themselves before they face or attack Israel. Listen to me again. Also, Ahab needed Jezebel so that as she comes in, by the backup of the princess from her land. Hallelujah. They are able to fight surrounding areas and take the lands of the enemies. That's why Israel has taken Moab as part of itself. Can I repeat it again? 